Oh, I'm so excited for you to see this. Hey everyone, it's Jay Sue. Welcome back to the channel. This is where I help dancers become more proficient and efficient in the digital space. And this is another how I built this video where I go behind the scenes for a project I already finished creating and talk you through the process that went behind creating that project. Today we're looking at a short dance film I was able to be a part of and I'm actually very excited because this is available for a limited viewing only for a week. So before you even watch the rest of this, I gave you a little teaser right before this. If you want to watch the whole thing, click on the link in the description below so you can watch it. It's good until next week. So limited time. If it does become available for viewing later on, I'll make sure I add that in the description. But even if it's not available anymore, don't click away. Hopefully this gives you some inspiration for some work that you could do on your own. As you saw the name of the film is called Paso. It was commissioned by a company in the area called Extreme Lengths Production for a work called Lens. Originally, I believe the idea was for a lot of artists to be in these installations at the Kennedy Center that people could go to and walk around and uh, interact with. Because of the pandemic, obviously things had to change. So I believe then Orange Grove Dance and another company, Slow Danger, were commissioned to create a digital project that will become part of the installation later on. So this is not the entire thing. This is a sampling of the footage. So the actual thing will be this installation with projection content on the inside and a lot of the footage that we took did not even make it into this cut. So stay tuned for that if you're in the DMV area. So because of this commission, we were able to go to upstate New York to a place called Aunt Karen's Farm for a whole week and just film and create. A quick note, and I think this is important to mention, because we knew we would be in such close proximity to each other for an entire week, we all discussed this ahead of time. We all did our best to stay socially distanced from everything else before we went. We all felt fine. And so we decided to not wear masks when it was just the four of us, just because we were going to be around each other so much. But whenever we went into town to do things, we wore masks. So. Before you get crazy in the comments about that, just know that we all took safety precautions. Also, Aunt Karen's Farm is an awesome residency place where they host artists throughout the year and just give them space and time to create or do admin work and just be away from all the craziness. It was such a beautiful space. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone at Aunt Karen's Farm for having us there. It was so awesome. I have some vlogs coming up that I'm going to hopefully edit soon. Sorry, life's been a little crazy as I'm transitioning jobs right now. But we got there right at the perfect time. The leaves were changing. When we got there at the beginning of the week, all the leaves were still there. By the time we left a week later, leaves were all gone. So we like hit that sweet spot. And sometimes we had sunrise shoots. It is 6.45 in the morning. Sometimes we had night shoots. But I'm ready. Okay, hold on, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> 
we did some green screening work when it was raining out so I basically brought my entire kit and it was perfect timing because this was right when my Canon R5 arrived in the mail so right away I got to use it every single day for like eight hours a day and really put it through its paces and test it out and get to know the camera. So this was really fun for me. I was just the DP, the director of photography. I operated the camera most of the time. I did not do any of the editing, so that was all Matt, so shout out to him. But I was there helping plan shots, execute shots, light things, stuff like that. Our main pieces of equipment were, were my Canon R5, and we shot mostly with, I think, the 16 to 35 millimeter and the 24 to 70 and then some with the 70 to 200 so I brought all of those lenses. We used my DJI Ronin S gimbal a lot and then both Matt and I have a set of Positin LED lights that we brought that we used along with my aperture light and my GVM LED panels. So again, I brought everything. <laughs> and for this project, Matt bought a drone. So we also used the DJI Mavic Air 2, I believe. And as you see, that opening shot is, oh, so good so let's get into watching the rest of this now because this video is for limited viewing only i can't really show you the whole thing start to finish with audio so i'm gonna mute it i'm gonna skip around a little bit so make sure if you're watching this before whatever i'm gonna put it under whatever this date is i think uh make sure you go check out the video come back and then watch the rest of this or watch this first and then watch whatever you want but go watch it that's all i'm saying all right, so here we go. Oh, again, this shot. So actually, this is really funny. So this was right outside in Karen's farm. We were, they were letting us stay the whole uh, week and it was beautiful out there. But there was this path and Matt had the great idea of laying down these leaves. And literally, this was the last shot of the day. The sun was going down, we were racing. So we had a wheelbarrow. We had two people scooping up leaves from the forest area, running back, dumping it. Another two people were there spreading leaves. And we made, I don't know how many trips to get this done in time. And the whole time I was like, Matt, is this really worth it? Like, But it turned out so good. So I'm sorry, Matt, that I ever doubted you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, Literally last shot of the day, we were scri we were hauling to get all the leaves there, and the wind was blowing a little bit. We we're like, Urgh! but uh, this turned out great. And as you'll see, there are some other shots that we did with this. And Juliana was our uh, subject for this entire project. Ooh, wait, go back. This shot. This this was really cool because this was handheld. So I'm gonna throw in a clip if I can find it. I was hand holding next to Juliana. I learned her choreography was up and down and I would move my camera side to side and all of that stuff. And so the camera was like diving with her, rolling with her. There was a moment where, and that it did not make into this cut, but where she does a roll onto the ground and with the camera, I'm also doing a roll with her. So the camera kind of like flips with her. Um, not the smoothest shot, but that wasn't really the goal. It was just cool to choreograph the camera to really go with the dancer getting close, getting far away, all that. Uh, and then this next shot, boom! This was shot at 120 frames per second, meaning it's super slow motion. It looks so buttery smooth. And uh, I made a reel of this actually, so it's on my Instagram if you want to check that out. But we were basically throwing rocks <laughs> at the water over and over again, trying to figure out where to land it to get it in frame. And this was the last throw of the day we had been doing these little pebbles hitting you know, little splashes and clips like let's do this rock and it's this giant thing like the size of my head oh yeah, half the size of my head and we're like okay you got one shot and she lobbed it and it went smack in the middle of the frame i was like woo money shot it looks so good and again this oh it's so good the contrast of the leaves against the green. At first, I was kind of skeptical. I didn't know how well the leaves would pick up because by the time we got them, they were not as vibrant. You know, they were dried up and you know brown. But the contrast with the green is really beautiful. And we're here for a while, so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Again, there's a lot of this like overhead stuff. So we were flying the drone in the forest, which is kind of funky. A little scary sometimes but we, there, it was always in clearings where we didn't have to uh, worry so much about running into trees although there is one shot where we were in a field actually and we were working on uh, doing like a panning shot of the drone and neither of us realized there was a tree right next to it and we almost crashed the drone so luckily we did not but uh, this is all with the uh, gimbal following Juliana from behind 
And these are just stationary shots at like the barn that was also in the area. A lot of B-roll shots. Okay, this shot. <laughs> so this was late at night. It was very cold out. And because it was so dark, I was on the gimbal. And then Matt and Colette were on either side with one of the Fositin LED panels. And it was extended up as high as possible. They were running on battery power, angled down. So that way we had lighting kind of from both sides without lighting what was in front of Juliana. Cause we wanted to keep it that like murky darkness. So I didn't want light that was kind of like from the camera's point of view. Cause I didn't want to light all the stuff that she was walking into. We wanted that darkness. So it was from the side. But the hard part was you can't walk in a straight line in the forest, right? Or you're gonna hit trees. So as Julian is walking, I'm moving, and then Matt and Colette have to like adjust and try and keep the same distance, but then they're running into trees and branches. Like I wish we had a behind the scenes shot of this because it was really funny. Seven, eight, four, one. Two, Matt, you should be down. Sorry, thought I was. We were all cold, we were really tired. This was at like, I think 10 or 11 p.m. And we learned uh, early on that there were lots of coyotes in the area and we would hear them howling. And Colette got very nervous and every time she heard something that she thought was a coyote, she would like book it back to the house and leave us stranded. So thanks Colette. But she always came back, so it's all good. Um, so yeah, this took a couple tries because it was figuring out how to position the lights, how to not run into each other, how to not get the lights in the scene. I think there were a couple of times where I would see the light start to peek down because Matt and Colette can't see what the shot is and it's hard to gauge distance with a thing that's like 10 feet up in the air. So this one took a while. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit more. More B-roll. Okay, now here you start to see this mirroring effect and going into the residency, this was an idea that Matt and Clet were already talking about. Uh, if you have watched Dark on Netflix, they referenced that a lot when we were planning uh, shots ahead of time before we got to New York and how in their like opening scenes in Dark, there's that like this mirrored kaleidoscope Rorschach kind of effect. And this is a, so beautiful. Like when you go and you just see the leaves in the middle, it's like it's a butterfly or something floating. Like, it's kind of crazy. I was not expecting that. And we didn't know how it would turn out at first until we got there and we started grabbing a couple clips and at night we would plug it in and see how it went. Oh, speaking of gear, I brought my entire desktop set up. I brought my desktop, my monitor, my keyboard. Like I brought everything because I knew we'd be filming a lot. We would want to test things out. We were shooting in 4K sometimes, so we just needed the computer power to test things that our laptops would really struggle with. And we to get all these shots, we walked around, we went to visit a bunch of uh, like local parks and it was really pretty. Some of these are trails right by us. Others were at uh, Glimmerglass State Park and I forget the name of the other one. I get a little dizzy watching this part sometimes. Okay, this shot is one of my favorite shots. It's a drone shot from up above shooting at the shore and it's mirrored and cut so you don't see the actual ground. That's all water and you can tell because you can see all the rocks here and you can see the um, ripples as the rain is hitting it, but oh, it just looks so good. Also, you can't hear it, but uh, the music was composed by Dylan Glathorn. Shout out to Dylan, he's amazing. So again, make sure you go watch the full video before the week is over. And then here, this shot, is cr you can't tell, but behind Julian is actually the water reflection. The water at these, so all, a bunch of these parks um, had these lakes and the water was so clear and so still when you look, looked at it, it looked like the sky, which was crazy. And we didn't find the shot until like we were about to leave. Like all that behind her, that's water. Cause you can tell by the um, tree reflection at the top. But we didn't even plan this shot. I was messing around with, we, I was messing around with my uh, vlogging camera and I happened to get that composition as we were filming Juliana doing something else. And I was like, wait, Matt, Colette, like you have to look at this. Like, and they saw it, like, we gotta try this. And we got lucky. Like 10 minutes, I think, into filming this idea, it started to rain. And then we got ripples all over the lake and this effects kind of got broken. It looked cool, but not the same. 
So it was one of those like happy accidents. We caught it right at, at the you know best time. Sun was going down. It was cloudy, so the lighting was also great. And this shot, this composition, is one of my favorites for sure from the entire trip. All right, and that is that. So. That was a short little behind the scenes of Paso. Make sure you go check out the full video. I'm gonna be dropping hopefully some behind the scenes vlogs from this trip soon, so check those out. Uh, yeah, this was just such a fun trip. And again, shout out to everyone. Thank you to Ben uh, and Annie from Extreme Lengths Productions and Lens. It was, this was one of my favorite trips I've ever done. It felt really cool just to be able to go and create for a week and not have to worry about other stuff. So, there we go. Enjoy the film. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you next time. Oh, make sure you uh, like this video, share it, subscribe, hit subscribe. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Five, six, seven, eight.